Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the permanent and imposed action on the girder B2. So I'll just show you where we're at now. In the previous video we found the UDLs in B1, the joists. Now we're looking at finding the loading in B2, this central girder over here. So I'm just going to draw, it's always good to draw a little diagram to get your head around what's going on. So what I've drawn here is just the girder B2. So this central girder is B2. And all these, all these um, beams here, the B1 joists. Okay, so I just want you to understand what's actually happening. Now, this entire length of beam has been loaded. We've seen, we've worked out in the previous video, B1. But the only amount transferring into the girder is going to be what I've drawn in red, right? So nine meters of this joist will be transferring into this girder over here. The reason is, is because this part, that part, that part, that part, that part is going to be taken by the exterior girders. All right. So the exterior girders are going to take the black and the interior girder will be able to take this amount of length of B1, the joist. And then we also have the girder B2, its own self weight. Okay. Now, because it's nine meters and nine meters there, we can divide this by two. So we're going to have 4.5 going that way and 4.5 going that way, which gives us a total of nine meters. The length of this girder is 12 meters. So the first thing we're going to do is find the permanent actions G, the dead load in the girder. So the permanent action in the girder is the permanent action from three joists. So these three joists above plus the self weight of the actual girder. Okay, so I can hope you realize that maybe now you're understanding that you can see this load pattern occurring. We first found the loading in the slab that was transferred into the joists, and now these the loading in the joists is transferred to the beam. All right, so I hope that sort of makes sense. We went from area, a slab, to joists, and now this these joists are are going into this girder over there. Okay, so the permanent action from the three times joist B1 we found in the previous video that the UDL was 16.995 kilonewtons per meter. So if I show you that, we found 16.995 kilonewtons per meter. And what we do is, we multiply that by the length of the joist. So the joists are nine meters in length. And then we multiply that by three, because there's three of them, okay? So kilonewtons per meter times meter will give us a kilonewton. So it's gonna give us 16.99 Sorry, 458.865. So 16.995 by 9 by 3 gives us 458.865 kilonewtons. Okay? Now, the self weight from girder as a UDL. So we have this girder over here. Now, we've always said it is the density, I hope you're realizing a pattern, times by the area, times by gravity, divide by 1,000. That's going to give us an answer in kilonewtons per meter. So the density is 2500. The area, so this is beam two. So going back to the section for beam two, this section, it's 1060 by 400 is the area. So it's gonna be 1.060 by 0.4, keeping our units consistent by 9.8. So 2500 by 1.060 by 0.4 by 9.8, divide by 1000, gives us 10.388 kilonewtons per meter, 2500 by 1.060 by 0.4 by 9.8, sorry, by 9.8 divided by 1000 gives us 10.388 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, then what we're going to do, that's as a UDL, right? Now, I'm just going to find that as a point load as well. It's important our final answer is going to be in point load because you see we're getting we're reducing down to point loads in kilonewtons, but it's important just to leave this as a UDL for now. You'll see why in the next video. So the self weight on the girder as a point load, so it's, it's still the same thing. We're just carrying this across. We're going to find this as a point load point load now. So it's 10.38 kilonewtons per 388 kilonewtons per meter. So we're just going to multiply by its length, 12 meters, to find an equivalent point load. So 10.388 by 12. So times that by 12 gives us 124.656 kilonewtons. So the per permanent actions is the sum of the three times the joist and the self weight. 
So we found the three joists, four, four, five, eight point eight six five. So four point eight point eight, four five eight point eight six five plus the one two four point six five six gives us a total answer of five eight three point five two one. Okay. So the permanent action on action on girder two. So in this girder, as a point load, is five eight three point five two one kilonewtons. I've still worked out, for example, the self-loading girder two as a UDL. Um, this is important, you'll see why in the next video where we're going to be finding um, shear forces and moments. It's just important when we actually construct our free body diagram to have this value separated out. Okay, But the final answer you're going to give is just a point load. The imposed action Q, but I hope you realize that what's actually happening is that in this girder B2, we have a UDL from self-weight and then we also have single point loads from um, the joists above. So a, as a diagram, as a free body diagram, we have a UDL from self weight and point loads from the joists above. Okay. Even though I've given an answer as a kilonewtons, when you separate the loads and you think about it, you have uh, point loads, okay, and you have a UDL. Now the imposed action Q. The imposed action on the girder is just going to be three times the imposed action from joist. Now once again, we don't, we've applied opposed action at the start of the problem over the slab, we don't double it up. So the imposed action was in the slab, then it went to the joists, and now it's going into the girders. All right? We don't have um, imposed action on slab, imposed action on girder, and imposed action on joist separately. It just starts on the slab and then it transfers through. So we're just going to go three times the imposed action from the joists, B1. So we found in the previous video that we had an imposed action of a 9 kilonewtons per meter. So if I just show you that, the imposed action on the joist was 9 kilonewtons per meter. So it's just going to be 9 kilonewtons per meter times by the length of those joists, which are 9 meters, and there's 3 of them, so times by 3. So 3 times 9 time, times 9, kilonewtons per meter times meter will just give us kilonewtons. So 3 by 9 by 9 gives us 243 kilonewtons. So the imposed action on the girder B2 is 243 kilonewtons. Anyway guys, hope that helps. We'll see you in the next video uh, where we'll be finding maximum bending moments and shears uh, in this girder we've just calculated. We'll see you there.